What's up guys, welcome to another YouTube video, and in this video, I do a little bit of over-explaining. Now, I tried to edit out some parts where I felt like I was going on and on, namely, like, Rage was a choice you're gonna see that I have in the middle of the run. I was gonna edit out most of this up, but I decided to just try to leave most of the talking and deliberation that I was going over, and let you guys decide if you guys want me to edit this stuff in the future, but this is gonna be an over-explained run for the most part, and more importantly than that, we actually take perfected strike all the way to the heart and we didn't remove a single strike which is very unusual it's something kind of unexplored territory for me usually you take perfected strike with snekawai but lately i've been finding that even in a world without snekawai or without some other crazy bonkers thing like enlightenment shenanigans you know what i'm talking about it's actually a pretty viable card and I, i've been having some fun with it i took my time this round i hope you guys enjoy and i'll see you guys in the next video bye Plan is uh, four wins in a row for all four characters. We're gonna time that and we're gonna do it all over again. So, four wins in a row, all four characters, and then do it all over again. Oh, just working. Hey, I hear you, man. Grind it out. Yeah, we we'll get some long streaming because we, we've been slacking on the streams. Alright, so we got early perfected strike for damage. You know, we've been down this road before. Let's go. I'm out of the double defend here. Or not. <laughs> Whirlwind? Are we? You know, I have a very big, uh, I would say, I mean, I, I just don't like it, Whirlwind early. But I mean, it does do AoE damage. It makes you wonder, right? For Act 1, Having a source like AO, uh, AoE, source like Whirlwind, probably makes sense, yeah? For Act 1. But for Act 1, the Guardian, shrug it off makes more sense for defense, yeah? Because we want to have defense for the Guardian here. Or at least consistent defense per turn. Unless, of course, we're going on a different kind of approach. I mean, there's a lot of factors that might change my mind, such as the shop, but... In general, you'll probably want like a card like shrug it off against the Guardian. It's one of those staple cards. Yeah, I feel like you know, Warwick falls out pretty quickly. Um, I don't really like it late game, but you know, it also has synergies, of course, right? Like bloodletting and ice cream. There's little things you can find, you know, chemical X. But if you if you have if you have Warwick, do you want it by chemical X? Probably not, right? Because it's only really working with Warwick. What's up, yeah, T Peaks Evening Governor? But at the same time, you know, solving AOE with Warwick is like good for triple centuries, and it's good for. Uh, it, it, I mean, AoE is important. It would require an upgrade as well. So let's say we want to upgrade Perfected Strike, we want to upgrade Whirlwind. Those are fair upgrades, right? Perfected Strike, Whirlwind, those are fair upgrades. And in a world where we're going to be keeping our strikes because Perfected Strike is in our deck, well then Whirlwind, I guess doesn't necessarily go against that. The problem with Whirlwind is that its effectiveness is gated by its energy cost and how much energy you're willing to spend. So for two energy, if you compare it to Immolate, you're doing... 16 damage. Immolate is doing 28. You know? When you compare it to Immolate, it looks like trash. Yes, it has different... Hey, hello from the office. Draco, I can't believe they have you coming into the office. How has the office life been? But I can't believe that... Well, when you compare the two, of course, like... Whirlwind is 16 versus Immolate 28, but... You know, this has other synergies that might play into... Like, you can have a higher ceiling, more damage AoE, with, but it spends all your energy as well. I really just don't like Whirlwind. You only going once a week? Okay, that's not too bad. And why do they need you once a week just to kind of, like, see some social social interaction, reconvene with your, your, your teammates? Was that something that they mandated? Um, was that, like, uh, did you fight for only once a week? Like, how did that go? You have to walk into a locked closet, basically. <laughs> I 
feel like we're going so bad, but you know what? In the nature of trying some things out, we're gonna take it and try to solve some AOE and interim with it. Because I can't just like I can't talk about the beauty of emulate, but I don't even have emulate, so. We're going really offensive. We take some like Himokinesis, our offense is, is really there. But then we're severely lacking the block density for the Guardian. There's also Havoc Whirlwind considerations, right? So Frozen Eye gets a little bit better because we can take like Havoc and play Whirlwind for a full energy cost, but not really, you know, and get it out of the deck. So get that crap out of the deck, exhaust it, but first get a massive amount of damage, yeah? So what's interesting is the Himokinesis is, uh, like, I think... My philosophy here is if you go for the offensive cards. We lose the whirlwind. And now our strike dummy. Boom! All of a sudden, Perfected Strike is looking that much better. Twin strike. Strike dummy. It's a strike, right? Perfected strike and it's a strike. Strike dummy. It's no brainer. We have Orrery. Gambling ship. Oh my god. Disarm for the Guardian. Solving the Guardian. We take Orrery here. Another twin strike. Another perfected strike. Another perfected strike. An offering. Another strike. Jesus Christ. Are you kidding me? Full strikes? Now, Cleave is an AoE card that we probably want, right? Right? But do we just go all in perfected strike? And then we gotta ask ourselves, okay, we need to solve energy. Yes, we have Ninshaku in the interim. Um we have offering, so we take the offering. That's fine. Now we have funeral pain. Now funeral pain could be like in the, the consideration for things like the triple century we might be fighting, or the chosen we might be come up, or maybe have some kind of powers that is helping with block density and helping with something that's future proof that is not so front loaded on pummel strike. And then you look at pummel strike, you're like, well, this is 12 damage and it also increases perfected strike. Okay, but then we want cleave perhaps because we, you know, do want to solve AoE to some extent, but then that's another perfected strike that I'm missing out on, right? And then there's also a twin strike, since strike here. Um, so we gotta make a decision. Do we want Cleave or Perfected Strike again? And now this is really leading to Sneko Eye and all that stuff. And I don't know how much Perfected Strikes I really want to get. I mean, do we just not care about Cleave at this point? And I, I feel like this is sort of a meme, but I have to lean into it. I'm so sorry, guys. I just have to lean into it. I know... I know it's ridiculous. I, I don't even know if Bash is even better here. Guys, I just have to lean into this. I don't even care. We're still going to make this win. Because I've learned a lot. I've got almost 3k hours and I'm ready to ascend, alright? Uh, awesome pizza, yeah, for sure, man. So we gotta make a decision. We have nine damage here. We're at 34, which with Perfected Strike, Perfected Strike is currently doing how much? Close to lethal. I'm gonna go for the lethal route. I can block for five or I can get lethal like this. Uh, there's probably lethal regardless, actually. Another strike. Do we just keep going in on the strikes? But then we gotta ask ourselves do we have the block density? Rigor Pillow might be necessary because I've been taking so much damage. Also, I realized, guys, I forgot to buy the Disarm at the shop. I was going so fast, I was so excited. You know what happens with Orrery? When Orrery happens, you click exit and then it leaves the shop. I forgot to click the shop again and buy Disarm for the Guardian. I really wanted Disarm for the Guardian. No Caparino. Um, and now we're like... Red Skull is huge. Alright, pizza. I really wanted Disarm for the Guardian. Whoops. 
That's gonna hurt us badly. I want to I want to keep my my nunchaku, so I want to kill this guy with perfected strike. Never mind. Okay, but at some point, yo, Sophia with the Twitch Prime, thank you. Sixteen months, it's insane. Woo! I like how it's so unenthusiastic. Whoa, uh, Sophia, we want an update on your nose. We've been asking for an update. So Shockwave is, it gives us the Vulnerable on the weekend, which is very good. I think I can pause Perfected Strike Conundrum and go for the Shockwave, but... I am a little bit... perturbed. That, uh, I didn't take the Disarm. Another Shockwave. Your nose is still bad. Fiendfire is antithesis of what we want to do here. It has got it better at all. Oh no. Maybe there, is there antibodies that you can you can take to make it better? These guys have plus strength. These things have plus strength. So do I though. You have plus strength and so do I. Battle trance. Okay. I really wanted that disarm. I really wanted that disarm. That would have been an exhumed disarm. Okay. Well, we don't have disarm. But on the other hand, we have dual wield. Now, we also can take fairy in the bottle. Let's say, for instance, this deck is very smork. It's very aggro. I've got 20,000 perfected strikes with a strike dummy. And it, damn, it feels good. But also, maybe I need the insurance of fairy in the bottle so I can keep up this perfected strike nonsense. Then the power, the energy relic that I'm going to be getting is going to be massive. Four energy is going to be huge for act two. If I get snake away, I can go all in for real. Um, relics here. Don't need the bottle. Well, I don't know how the guardian fight's gonna go. This is likely that I can use the bottle for the guardian for sure. Uh, if I want to remove, do I remove a sh defend? Are we just not doing defense in this deck? This is weird. Um, like defense are pretty bad. Smooth stone can help me get along this block, but I don't have anything to apply for smooth stone. Smooth stone makes no sense. This thing of courage, I don't think it's necessary. I think we're doing really just fine against at least anyways. Tiny chest, I can suppose I could take for another relic down in the future, but that's really these are really not the relics I'm looking for. Um, is there is there like things you can do to trick your brain to helping it smell? Remember smell? All right, you guys are saying I don't need the the bottle. You think I'm just fine against the guardian stuff like that? I'm thinking I want to keep upgrading my perfected strikes, and go smork, smork, smork. Now I'm really sad, still, I don't have disarm. And if we die because we don't have disarm, well that's gonna suck. But okay, disarm would have been good. I have no block in the deck, guys. So this fight is gonna be very, very interesting. And <laughs> flash of steel. Wait, what? <laughs> what? <laughs> what? <laughs> Holy shit. You just gotta love it, man. So double tap with Fetch Strikes. 
If I upgrade double tap and stuff like that, it actually might be pretty good. That's, that's a lot of damage. Almost too much damage. Corruption is good for future proofing, but with what skills? Corruption helps get Shockwave out, right? We play Corruption, Shockwave gets played, our defense get played alongside our Perfected Strike, then we get nothing but Perfected Strike in our draws. This is not sustainable, all right? This kind of deck needs to now get some future proof. He needs to get some other things going to su survive the rest of the Spire. It's strong right now. It's, it's going to definitely smork the, the elites. But um, it needs some kind of future proofing. And corruption can just do just that, right? You know, feel no pains and then corruption with expensive skills. And, um, you know, playing corruption allows me to still play my expensive perfected strikes as well as play skills. So we have cards over battle trance and we can play... You know, whatever skills we start picking up alongside the perfect strike. Although it takes a turn to play corruption, of course. Now people, people love double tap. They're like double tap perfected strike. We love it. We love it. We love it. And you know, I just, I just disagree. I feel like okay, double tap does. It does increase the damage quite a bit, but wouldn't I rather just play two perfected strikes and get closer to Nunchaku than play? Well, double tap makes more sense if we get snake away, right? I don't know, guys. Like, double tap just goes further into my offense, right? But my offense is kind of my strongest part of my deck, whereas corruption is doing this, is kind of solving energy. And it's a little bit clunky, but maybe it provides more of a uh, future proof for my deck. I don't know. Do we. Is it absurd to say that our offense, to go further in on the offensive double tap, is actually just kind of a win more kind of scenario? Okay, double tap makes more sense if we don't get an energy relic. But then all the perfected strikes feel kind of clunky as as well. Corruption is strong later, so it's like a future proof thing where we can probably try to get like a dark embrace, feel no pain, skill, skill, skill load this, and now we have perfected strike is our offense. It's done. We don't need any more offense for the heart. We already have tons of offense with perfected strike. They're they're smacking. Now we want to maybe go wide, make the deck a little bit bigger, get corruption involved, get other powers involved, and of course we need energy for all this stuff. But. At the same time, I had never tried double tap, um, like not in a serious way. It would be good for offering turns. If I play offering, double tap can play uh, upgrade. Double tap can play four perfected strikes, so that can do. If they're vulnerable, that could do two hundred damage, two hundred plus damage. Actually, if they're vulnerable, two hundred forty plus damage. On a turn with offering vulnerable, double tap can create two hundred forty plus damage. Which is insane for collector or insane for the champ, right? I mean, it's just insane damage. Um, but what about everything else that's going on in the deck? Double tap also can kill the, the avocado in one hit. Let's try this out. We want gold. Let's go for energy. This is going to be one of those smorky, smorky runs, and we're going to really experiment here the depths of this smork. Maybe I keep fairing the bottle for the, for the heart. I mean, it, go, it goes so deep that we keep the fairing the bottle all the way for the heart here. Yo, thanks for the 100 bits. I know you picked the right card no matter what. Thank you. Thank you for the positive reinforcement. We have a lot of campfires here for some upgrades. So upgrades that we're looking for. We definitely want to upgrade the pummel strikes. We want to upgrade the double tap. If we're going to be playing offering for red skull and stuff like that, or just in general for the energy to, you know, we'll offset our burning blood, but we'll, we'll kind of kill fights really quickly. Then maybe an upgrade at some point. But I would say Palmer Strikes and Double Tap are upgrades. Maybe Shockwave is also an upgrade. But let's say we want to prioritize Elites, right? Because Relics are really going to change the course of this game. So we have three Elites here with one Campfire. Is that too risky? Three Elites, one Campfire? What else do we have? Over here, we only have one Elite. So we have one Elite everywhere else. So yes, I would probably want to do like these Campfire paths for the shop and do things like that. But I also want to get Elites. So it's kind of complicated. Kind of complicated. But I mean, we're killing things very quickly. I would argue that Block Pot is probably better than Attack Pot. But Attack Pot goes with Nunchaku and we're kind of smorking things. But Block Pot can save me more life, perhaps. Um, and it's tough to say. Now it feels bad that we have, like... So I remember, I gotta be using all my potions here. I gotta be using my potions because we have only Thopter for sustain. That's very relevant sustain. Now, do we take a ghostly armor just so we have some block of the deck? Okay, so we can get upgraded cards. That's pretty good. And if I get that warp tongues, 
Upgrades are not as important. We can remove the paint all the way over here. That's kind of far away, but... I think Warp Tongues are probably worth it in the long run because of... Who's the boss real quick? The Collector? We can kill the Collector in like two, three turns. Warp Tongues can make my existing defense a little bit better, I suppose. And I guess the upgraded strikes are actually not bad. I don't know. I don't know if I actually want Warp Tongues per se. Do I want to put a paint in my deck in a deck that is already kind of... Like, what would be the benefit of having an upgrade every turn? For long fights, my defense get upgraded. And my strikes as well. It even hits my pommel strike sometimes. But in general, like, I don't necessarily want the downside of a pain. I think I actually want to make sure my life is not getting lower randomly. But also making sure my draw is not getting inundated. So what I'm going to do is actually upgrade the double tap here. This is one of the fights that's the harder fights for us. So, for sure, we want to utilize some double tap power here. Double tap is already doing work. Double tap is already doing work here. And this guy's going to die very easily. Now, it's important to remember that we should probably use our potions. of the healing aspect that was not a very good time to use the potion now we have combust rupture and armaments all right combust helps with the aoe fronts it does some self damage it's an upgraded power it kind of helps with this whole like play like you know have like some passive power because right now we have a lot of front loaded power we want some passive power uh, this is a Deal 7 AoE, which could help with things like Slavers, but I feel like for Slavers and Gun Leader, we're kind of just smorking things with Perfected Strike. Go Combust would be kind of kind of going backwards a little bit. I think what we want to worry about is the passive power that helps our block for the long haul so we can stay alive. But again, we have fear in the bottle. We might hold this for the rest of the game and use that against the heart. So we got to make sure we, we rotate this slot efficiently. A combust being upgraded is kind of nice. I mean, it's 7 AoE. It does help me have damage distribution. If, I mean, if I'm using like big clunky perfected strikes for single target things, to have a passive 7 AoE for the small things that I can't really want to waste damage on, it makes some sense, right? It makes some sense to have some passive AoE so I don't have to waste my big big strikers. But what fights would that be relevant in? Okay, that would be relevant in... Um, I mean, at this point, it's not really relevant in any fight because perfected strike can solve all the, the multi-enemy fights. So, like, the baseball with the sentry that's solved with Perfected Strike. It's a two-enemy fight. Chosen plus one is solved Perfected Strike. What else? What are, what are small things that might be annoying? Gremlin Leader. Gremlin Leader I can see being useful for Combust, but Gremlin Leader we're killing with Perfected Strike anyways. So, Chosen plus one, we kill this regardless. I mean, at this point, we can actually just go like this. And then Chaco's going to kill these guys. Um, that's interesting. This fight's over already. I'm not. I'm not getting to utilize my potions here. Uh, this is a good time to utilize potions, but not even. I mean, not even. Like, I think offering would achieve the same thing. Oh, we got a potion back though. All right, so now we can start coming back to the block question and be like, okay, do we want to try adding Shrug It Off to this deck or is Shrug It Off just um, going against what we actually want to do, which is smoke them really quickly. I, I'm a little uncomfortable with this. I, I, I'm not used to this because the way I built decks, the way I learned this game was you have a block profile, you have a damage profile, and you want to keep a balance between both. You want to remove strikes, and then you want to make sure you have at least 20, 30 block on a given turn. That's how you play Ascension 20. You want to have this ability to tap into this, like, at least 20, 30 block. But when you have decks like this, I mean, it changes your, the way things are working. I mean, block's only important if you can't kill them immediately. And for the most part, I can kill them. There's going to be some fights where I won't be able to kill them. And the other things come into play. I think we keep skipping here. I 
I mean, this is an example of... You know, 27 black would be useful if I couldn't kill it, but I could kill it, you know? Um, so then we have things like Metallicize. Berserk and Fire Breathing. I think Berserk is quite useful. Berserk gives us energy. Energy is huge. Energy is... More perfected strikes, more double tap potential. I'm a huge fan of Berserk and upgrading Berserk. Yes, it could be dangerous, but for sure I like the energy. Alright, and now we have three elites. From later, we want to just focus on him exclusively. So here we could just do like double perfected strike instead of double tap. You know, but if we had energy here, this would be a nice... Uh, although this guy is going to weaken us. So what we could do is actually... We could do this. Double strike here. Get new shaku value. I get the same amount of damage I would get anyways, right? But I also kill the gremlin. I kill the little gremlin. And there's double tap power right there. You kill the gremlin and you get the nunchaku value. Beautiful. This is probably an offering regardless. So I'm going to be taking that damage. Looking for Perfected Strike. We got Perfected Strike. The fight's over. And that's just that simple. Cool. Blood Vial, more sustain. So, we, be, we could be taking more Palma Strikes. More Strikes, you know, with Berserk. Now we have reason for Palma Strikes because we have Berserk. Kind of feed it a little bit. They're not upgraded, unfortunately. What's up, Hernis? Now, what about Rage? Now, this deck is like attack only. Let's say I upgrade this Rage. For every attack, I gain 5 block. Alright, with double tap, I'm probably... I'm attacking 4 times on average a turn. Right? Maybe 3 times on average on turn. With Rage. With the card draw that I have, right? And with Berserk is online, I can even go up to 5 attacks a turn. But, let's say on average of 3... So, Rage is probably going to be 15 block whenever I draw it. That's versus a strike. The strike is increasing all my damage. It's also one more potential card draw and an upgrade if I were to upgrade it with Berserk, right? But Rage can maybe solve some of this smorkiness. An upgrade on Rage would be giving me a little bit more block to survive chip damage. Uh, without upgrade, it doesn't feel good. Those are the terms for double tap is awkward. Play the potion because I wanted to get uh, you know the healing out of it, but I wouldn't. I wasn't actually getting any healing, so it was it was stupid. It saved some life. It saved four life, and it you know potentially could have dropped another potion, but you know I didn't actually get any healing out of it. Unfortunately, my twin strike is another strike. Strike dummy. And, uh, you know, perfect strike, right? So, just working a ton and playing as much Isaac as reasonably possible. Very nice, man. How is it? Is the new Isaac something I should be getting on? Thunderclap's interesting as well, but we already have Vulnerable to some extent. If I take Twin Strike, at some point we gotta be asking ourselves, we have way too many strikes, right? Well, then, let's say we take Twin Strike, that means that it leaves room for, like, strike removal down the line. But would I want to remove strikes, or would I rather remove defense at this point? So we got at some point taking twin strike has to be too many strikes, yeah? It just has to be. But does it? Does it does it really mean too many strikes? And I think it I think we're approaching near terminal velocity of strikes here. If a snake away comes to the picture, that changes everything, of course. So then the card draw offsets kind of the bloat that I'll be adding. I mean, by itself, Twin Strike is doing, um... 16 damage. By itself. 16 damage. Which is like a whirlwind for 2 energy. 
on a single target if you want to play in that because I was just talking about 16 earlier in Act 1. Um, it also creates all my practice strikes plus 3. An extra 9 damage throughout the deck. 16 for 1 and an extra 9 damage for all the practice strikes together. That's incre incredible, Snaven, for sure. I think I'll, now is the time to check it out. I, am I going to be deliberating for every strike here? I think how I feel about Twin Strike here is going to set the way for how I treat every strike from here on out, right? Pommel Strike is a little bit different because it, it actually has an upgrade potential to draw cards, which is always useful. Twin Strike is 16 energy, sorry, 16 for 1 energy, and it makes everything else plus 3. And I gotta ev evaluate, at what point is that actually overdoing it? Well, it, it takes us away from finding Offering and Shockwave. It takes us away from finding Perfected Strike. It takes us away from finding Double Tap, which we probably want to use. So I think we, we start skipping strikes from here now, you know? Who, ha who, who, has, who has Perfected Strike uh, mastery here? Who, who is a, a very skilled Perfected Strike player in, out of Century 20 at the highest level? Has beaten the heart many times with Perfected Strike. I need to know who has done this, has slayed many hearts with Perfected Strike in a deck like this, and how will they evaluate Twin Strike here? I've, I'm, in a, I'm kind of unfamiliar territory with me. You know, I, and I don't know how much I should just go all in here. Well, that's Life Coach right now. What, would he take Twin Strike in this deck? Where's Life Coach right now? Is he streaming? Is he streaming right now? He's not. How do we get a hold of this man? Where's my Ask a Life Coach, uh, real quick? Just because he has more. He probably has more experience with Perfected Strike here. I think what we can evaluate is that at this point, Perfected Strike is the more valuable of the the strikes, and Double Tap, Berserk. Perfected Strike stuff is more important, so Twin Strike is just diluting. So we're going to make a decision to start skipping strikes here. Okay, Calipers. Now, is there a way that we can pivot this deck into Calipers? Can we pivot this fine Impervious Entrench? And now we have Calipers Entrench Impervious, right? Maybe as Future Proof. And Perfected Strike as Offense. Or is Calipers never going to see the light of day? I mean, you, rather, you never really know. You never really know. Like, I, I could skip this. I could sci-fi key calibers and everybody would be gasping and going crazy. Or I could take it and say, you never know what the future might hold for this calipers. An impervious might be offered. Maybe we can pivot into some kind of impervious entrench to gain some kind of block. Yeah, I have one defensive card, exactly. So calipers is not for what my deck is doing now, but maybe future use of calipers. But surely Calipers are doing nothing right now. But I wonder if it's too foolish to skip it. If there's ever a world we can actually pivot with this Calipers. Is the pivot ever possible? Well, with Berserk and Offering as our base. And card draws Battle Trends. I mean, I don't think it's ever out of the picture. Depending on what the Energy Relic is for this boss. Like a Snickle, for instance. Snickle's still on the table. Sure, we might get some like uh, Impervious. And some things might pop off with Calipers. It might have some use. Rage? I don't know about Rage. Rage Calipers? I don't know about that. It feels foolish to skip Calipers, though. Because surely it can, it can see some light, no? Or is this deck stri strictly going to Fairy Bottle territory? And just full committing like this? It can't. It can't full commit like this. Yeah, but I, you gotta keep Rage in mind. There's a negative draw, then I gotta find Rage alongside all those 8 attacks, and... Well, I didn't take the rage, of course, and I didn't. I have to upgrade the rage for it to feel good. Otherwise, it's like six block for two attacks, and that feels pretty bad, right? Um, okay. If we were to find, to say, impervious, and we add it to our deck, would we want a calipers with that impervious, anyways? And if we get things like horn cleat. 
or or captain's wheel would calipers help there we we, we gotta ask ourselves will, will cars like previous come up we might want calipers in our deck for sure because then it allows us to play like at least 25 block for the pre for the next turn if we we don't get full value out of it It feels. I think it's too foolish to skip calipers because I think it can lead me a way out of of this. At least potential for some kind of block pivoting. Yeah, but I'm saying the turns where I'm not taking damage. I, I, it's, it's all determines whether or not I have impervious to begin with, and it would have to be like a turn where I'm not taking damage, and then I play impervious, and then it can make. make and then it also depends on the relics I get. Keep in mind, I'm getting two more relics, so there's block relics that exist. And we'll see what we miss out on. And there we go. You don't need to block as much when you can kill things like that. You kind of want to stack up Ninshaku here. How much, how much do we want to stack up in Chaco? A little bit more, yeah? Because we're about to fight an elite. Alright. So second wind. Okay. Um, second wind is... um. Well, different, different than Rupture, because Rupture is a card you put in your deck as a curse, but Calipers is a relic you can hold on your mantle. So, think about it this way. The relic that is going to replace Calipers is not here yet, and Calipers is just there in my mantle. Putting Rupture in the deck is in my deck It's a curse. It's a little bit different when, when it comes to relics, but I, I understand your point. Second Wind. Get rid of the defense that are really clogged. I don't know. Second Wind has some potential future, future potential as well. We can maybe pick up a Power Through, and we can get some block of Second Wind Power Through stuff. But again, this is all, how to say, um, this also helps with, with statuses as well. I mean, I don't mind. I think a, a single or second win is pretty useful in any deck. Because they can get rid of uh, you know, skills that I don't want to play or statuses that I may be getting in other fights. So I think second win is, is, is a good speculative pick in general. But it's a curse for sure most fights. But we take curses for most fights because the way you build decks in this game is by picking cards that are not good for most fights, but is good for particular fights that you need to win. So I feel like second one could see some play in the heart. Might see some play in Act 4 Elite. Um, you know, where statuses are, are being involved. And if we ever want to maybe pick up a power through, we should get some, some block like that. Sure. But I don't know if even block is... Again, I'm very unfamiliar territory with me here. Since you guys have seen Life Coach, would he take second win in a deck like this? It doesn't make a lot of sense, but in general, I think he takes second win almost always because I think he just likes that card. And for good reason, you know, it, it is pretty good value in hallway fights if you're trying to get rid of junk. And he's obviously really good with set power through as well. And it has some future-proof scaling with feel no pain and stuff like that. Which alone could probably solve your block issues. If you have if you have fairy in the bottle to back you up. Feeling no pain, a second win, the power through can really solve most block block issues. I'm gonna try it out. But that might be my first first like little curse, I suppose. So here we're not even utilizing for like this is a really bad turn. I wonder if this was like a perfected strike. So if this was perfected strike instead, we, we would be much better off. I don't even want to waste my Ninchaku here. I'm wasting all my energy here. I don't even want to waste Ninchaku here. But if this is perfected strike, this would, this would be better off. If this was a twin, if this was a double double tap, this would be better off. So double tap. Or Perfected Strike, one of them would have died. 
If this was a shockwave, this would have been better. So this is why you evaluate second wind. Second wind, if there was any other card in my deck, it would probably be better. Even a defend would be better here. A defend would be better than second wind on this turn. So this is how you know second wind was like really a bad curse right now. Do I save Nenshaku here? Or is the 9 damage too, too beneficial? Any other card in my deck would be better, okay, except for Sender's Bane. So second one was extremely bad here. Ah, I should have not taken it. I don't know. So I can kill this guy, and then we could do Shockwave, and probably play an offering no matter what here. All right, so we can kill two of them. And we can we can get away with the Berserk here. And we have Red Skull, so it's all good. Try to get Nchaku stacked. Could be worse. Mango's max HP is good. All right, so we have Headbutt and Zoom. So Headbutt brings back things from my discard pile that I may want to play again, which right now I actually don't see any play off of that. And Exhum can bring back Shockwave or Offering, which I also don't see that much play off of this, unfortunately. I like Exhum as a future-proof kind of card, but <laughs> it's kind of a curse right now. Uh, second win is a curse as well, but we're hoping the second win can pop off, so it's a curse that I'm willing to take and deal with. Remember, uh, using potions for healing is probably really important for me. Headbutt for double tap. I mean, that is one consideration. Like headbutt for double tap means I can set up a really big lethal turn for collector. Now, exhum with offering. The problem with that is that you're you're, you're spending six h six hp then six hp. That's twelve hp in a fight. That's that's pretty detrimental, you know. And how often do you want to like exhum the double tap? I'm sorry, headbutt the double tap. I feel like this is a skip here. We have Frozen Ice, so we can play in our turns a little bit more. We have another Fairy in the Bottles, so we can hold into Fairy in the Bottles and then say to ourselves, uh, if I have only Fairy in the Bottles and I have a Smork deck, I could beat the Heart. Um, but then I'm losing a lot of Ornithopter value, you know? Here we probably want to remove a Defend. It gives Second Wind even less targets. But Second Wind is existing as perhaps a... Power through enabler or something else down in the future, or maybe it's just the curse that I've messed up with. Honestly, the shop doesn't seem that great. I mean, there's a world where Frozen Eye is pretty decent because I do have some like plus one draws and I have you know, the battle trance and stuff. I can kind of take a look at what's going on here. I can even plan my turns with Perfect Strike and Double Tap stuff. So I would say Frozen Eye still sees some good play here. Of course, I want to kind of stock up on fairy in the bottles because I think when you have a deck like this fairy in the bottles are just kind of how you win the game but I don't like the ornithopter kind of going on there so we can save our money for an even better relic down in the future but I think frozen eye is okay here and we'll go ahead and skip here everything else so I mean I think it's useful to see what's, com what's going on here this guy's almost lethal I, I, I should keep track of my potion chance. I, I lost track of my potion chance here. So here we have offering. So offering draws into these three. Battle trans draws into these three, and then I can kill. I kill all of them with offering. I kill them all here. But also without offering, I could do bash. Bash, Pommel, Twin Strike. I think we're always using Offering here. We're always using Offering here. Should I use the Potion here? What's my Potion Chance at right now? Oh, 
it's right. I guess I could have I could have potioned and, and, and you know I, I don't know what potion chance is at, so I'm gonna just Alright, I had a potion, fuck. Alright, I gotta keep track. So my potion chance do we, how do we like find a potion chance when you're in the middle of the run? How do we figure this out? I think I'll be holding to that potion though. Look at that. Captain's wheel. So here. Boom. Captain's wheel was an example of why calipers could be useful. Because we might get captain's wheel on turn where we don't really need a block, and then we have calipers to hold on to some block, or we play in trench or whatever. But in general, it's whatever. Evolve is interesting. Evolve gives more credence to the second win pick. So now we can maybe manage statuses in a fight that will do it. So this is we play evolve in the heart, we play evolve in the uh, Act 4 Elite. And the card, the card negative card draw doesn't affect us as much, and then maybe second one has more targets as well. Um, Immolate is an AOE card that plays with um, double tap. It also could play with second wind. If I use Immolate and I draw cards, burn second wind can target those. But again, um, I'm thinking like take evolve just so I can manage statuses a little bit better, and maybe carry on. And I don't think Immolate is actually even necessary at this point. I think we could, um, for all the AoE fights, we can one-shot the thing. So Darklings, we one-shot. The Drawworms, we one-shot. For Reptomancer, we kill the Reptomancer directly. For the Collector, we're killing the, the Collector directly. For the Act 4 Elite, we're killing the, the, you know, either side of the Act 4 Elite directly. So there actually is no AoE fights that I'm concerned about. When it comes to the Explody Boys and the Spikes and all the different shapes, Perfect Strike single targets those as well. So Emily is not necessary. Evolve would just be kind of insurance for certain fights that give us statuses. Um, well, it also does nothing on the turn I played. On the turn I played, it's just nothing. It has no relevance in this fight at all. So the only fights that has relevances is the Heart and Act 4 Elite, and sometimes the Reptomancer as well, but Reptomancer will be already killed within the first four turns. So Evolve actually doesn't see that much play, except for the Act 4. And I think we're at a point where we should probably be thinking about Act 4, but then I gotta ask myself, is it worth taking the Evolve for Act 4, or would I rather just draw Perfected Strike instead and kill it instead, right? Or if we're talking about the Heart, well for the Heart is definitely, you know, the Heart's going long, so an Evolve definitely helps against the Heart. I can't uh, deny that. And maybe actually keeping Lincoln Memories for this boss fight was probably necessary as well. Evolve is... I, I would take Evolve simply for the heart, I suppose. For everything else, Evolve is a nasty, nasty curse. But for the heart, I suppose it makes sense. What's that relic that I put? It's called uh, a, a Bottle of Flame. So I don't know, guys. Did we take Evolve for the heart? Uh, also, there's a world where Mark of Pain gets offered to us. Mark of Pain makes Evolve and Second Wind a little bit better. Right, so Market Pain is a relic that can show up. And I can think about that. I'll do the, the Evolve here for the heart, simply. If we're talking about upgrades, I think Offering, if we ever play it, the fact that it draws 5 is pretty good. And we could probably set up Lethal in this fight. So we can do Shockwave and Bash, and then we start thinking about Next turn we have double tap. Uh, if we if we stack in Chaco more, we had double tap uh, perfected strike here, which is very good damage. Matter of fact, if I do shockwave, if I do bash strike, is that Chaco's at seven, right? Chaco's at seven. If I do double tap, it's still not enough. Still not enough. Double tap doesn't get as much value as it wants, but still decent enough. Cause so I get double twin strike here, plus another strike. It's a decent rage turn. Next turn we have offering. We we'll draw one, two, three, four, five. We we'll draw six. I would like double tap with the offering turn. That would have been nice. I could even um. 
kill these little minions, but I think smorking this makes the most sense. I will go ahead and keep smorking it. And we have lethal with red scope, most likely. 22, 72. The fight doesn't last long. Now let's see what relic we get here. So we get Brutality, Reaper, and Barricade. Okay. So Reaper is some sustain that operates with the um, Red Skull. Sometimes I get low and Reaper can heal up. You know, it also goes in hand in hand with uh, the fact that I'm not really blocking I'm using my face for most things. We have max HP to kind of justify it. Um. Brutality gives us more card draw. Card draw is pretty interesting because of the fact that I have Berserk in the deck. So if I have six card draw plus you know, five energy, depending on what relic we get here as well, maybe even six energy, and then we're playing upwards of you know two perfect strikes a turn. Or I mean, there's a lot of damage that can be outputted with brutality here. But of course, it's another setup that probably wants to be upgraded. It also is kind of cheap. Doesn't do anything immediately, but it definitely. Helps there on after. We haven't seen Sneko, so Sneko might be in the, the picture here. Reaper helps me have a little bit more longevity throughout the Spire, right? If I'm going to be depending on Blood Vial and Ornithopter and kind of using Offering, right? And also not wanting to use Regal Pillow because I got a recall once, right? And we probably want to upgrade like the Pommel Strike. We'll probably want to upgrade Shockwave so we have permanent weak and invulnerable. Then if we're not going to want to rest, which we probably don't, Reaper can kind of help us get through Act 3, but I'm, I'm thinking Act 4. I mean, I'm at the point where I feel like I even solve Act 3 at this point. All the fights that I'm worried about, I, I can handle. I've already, I've already thought about all of them. The Darklings, the Jawworms, the Spaghetti Monster, the Transient, the Reptomancer, the Giant Head. I mean, Giant Head might give us a little bit of issue, but whatever. I think we still can manage with on a big offering turn, double tap. So I'm thinking for Act 4, Brutality is better for the long fight, uh, for the heart. So I, I'm exclusively thinking the heart here. Which is why I take things like Evolve. What's up, Doc, uh, Dr. Steezy McGee? What's up, man? How you doing, man? What's up, Reloading? Yeah, we've done some stuff, some speedrun stuff. When, when you use glitches, you can beat the heart in under 10 minutes. With glitches, you can kind of do like a... Um, probably like four hearts in an hour. Yeah, spaghetti monster is a pain in the ass. So Reaper is kind of just like the approach you take when you want to have more sustain for Act 3. And Brutality is better for the heart. But maybe Fairy in the Bottle is enough for the heart. I don't know. It's tough to say. I don't have a Disarm. Remember, I didn't take that, unfortunately. Which would help against Philosopher's Stone stuff. I'm okay with Reaper here. I'm also okay with Brutality. Reaper does more, right? Reaper is more proactive in Act 3. It actually does something. Whereas Brutality it really doesn't do anything except for the heart. So I'll do something that, that actually does something. So we get three Relics. And maybe Relics are important. So things like um, Tori to help solve the heart. Or, you know, Instance Burner. Any of these rares. Could help solve the heart and how many leads are we black shark might do the same thing as calling bell black shark might give me the same amount of relics without giving the curse and the runic dome will give me five energy a turn but i won't see their intentions now i do gotta say if, if there's ever a deck that doesn't really care about intentions it's probably a deck like this that is um is pretty smart there's not a lot of block involved now i do have frozen eyes so sometimes it feels weird to have runic dome so then have the ability to control my draws and see what I'm doing, but also not see what they're doing. It can make the hard fight more intense. And I think maybe I want to lead towards more relics, because we want to find things like the Tori, the Itzens Burner, things that can kind of just keep us alive for the important turns. What opponents do I find the most fun? What opponents do I find the most fun? I find the... Uh Most fun. Huh. 
What's it? Awaken one champ. What's most fun? Hmm. That's tough, man. <laughs> I don't know. That's tough. Awaken one stuff is fun because you can kind of go infinite and do and kind of play things differently. All right. So. Black Star gives us the relics that we probably want, but how much better is five energy in this deck? Azet, Azet Zolamid, thank you, man. Girl Meter is pretty fun as well. I actually like Girl Meter, but you know the RNG can be a pain in the ass. Maybe we just want five energy. Maybe we just want the five energy and just energy this this down, you know, that can really um, solve Act Four alone. I'm worried that I, I I need to get like I need to kill the heart within like four turns, right? We have Fray in the bottle as well. I think we can kill the heart within four turns if we get evolve out early. But you know, but actually would help me get some relics that would help against the heart. But you know, at the same time, there is events that give us rare relics that we care about. We care about the rare relics here. We care about the rare relics, so let's just look for events and elites. So we have three leads here, and two events, three leads, two events here. What else? With three leads here as well, with a later shop. This one has four events and an early shop. Do we care about the early shop? Early shop might be necess might be bad because the early shop might like have a rare relic we really want to buy. I'm telling you, the relics that we really want to find relics. Like so, Black Star would have been an extra four relics that might solve the game. Um, you know, like the blocking relics essentially. The early shop might be pretty bad though. Because what if, what if we just really want a rare relic here? And the early shop is just gonna take it away from us. Okay. Another perfected strike. Okay, when it comes upgraded, I mean, that's pretty decent, yeah? Let's go. So, I don't want to see a shop for rare relics. And these rare relics were not that great. Move at hand, it's not that necessary. Toolbox might be necessary. So, toolbox... There's toolbox, there's also a flame barrier for some blocks, so we're not completely blockless. Toolbox gives me things like uh, maybe Panacea for the Vulnerable would be best case scenario. That would save a lot of life against the heart. It also gives me card draw sometimes. It gives me Dark Shackles to kind of solve uh, multi-hits. Dark Shackle alone could be good for like... You also give me Trip or Weaken. Apotheosis could see some play. Apotheosis means that my Pommel Strike is actually really beneficial. My Evolve is a little bit better. My Second Wind is a little bit better. I mean, you know, I think on average Toolbox is pretty good. Now, I could save money for a, um, for the Act 4 shot, but I think a Toolbox, you know, it has a lot of play. And I actually don't mind the Flame Barrier. The Flame Barrier gives me some block, so I'm not out there in the wilderness with nothing, but would I rather just play Perfect Strike instead of a Flame Barrier? Now, for the Heart, Flame Barrier does 60 damage, so it's pretty decent. But for every other fight, Flame Barrier is just 12 block versus... Uh, actually, I haven't been keep keeping track. I think versus, like, 50 to 70 damage. Depending on the fight, of course. So, um, I mean, I had the energy for Flame Barrier, that's for sure. But I can't even be sure when this is going to be best against the Heart because I don't have intentions. There's also something to be said about potions. If I use potions like Blood Pot and buy Power Pot, using these potions is probably really beneficial because it's how we stay alive. And, you know, I could get more upgrades, get my recall safer, etc, etc. So who's all on board for Flame Bear? Or do you guys think that maybe blocking is not where we're going here? And we're going to be smorking the hearts with Fairy in the bottle to back us up. And you guys think that's enough. You know, there's still some ways to go before we get to the heart. There's still some things we can do to solve it. Uh, 
Flame Bear is just kind of it's a decent upgrade as well. I mean, I guess 16 block for two is okay. You guys are feeling potion. Well, how much am I healing here? 20%, right? So we're healing 16 plus five. We're healing 21. Kind of overhealing a little bit. Kind of overhealing, but at the same time, we also have blood vial. So we're, we're, we're really overhealing with the blood pot. We're really overhealing. Yeah. Flame bear is, is damaged, but like. A flame bear will help me against the, the awakened water donor deck a little bit. Uh, this is exactly what we want to see. We want to see this because this is. So I can take good instincts or I can take flash of steel. Flash of steel makes the most sense from Ninjaku here. And we have offering as well. So this is actually really decent. Let's take a look at the card draw we're gonna get. We're gonna get five card draw here. Um, I can play Berserk and I can play Double Tap um, Reaper. I can also draw into Ghostly and Strike this turn. I can draw all the way up to Hemokinesis this turn, actually. Now, if I do Berserk, that's basically implying that I'm gonna use Blood Pot at the end of this. Because these guys do do a lot, but they don't do that much in turn one. And besides, I can heal up with Reaper. Um, okay, so. If I do Berserk, that means that on the next turn I can heal up all, I can draw up to here, then the next turn I draw up to here. So I kill one of them perfected, and then I have Pommel for the next one. And then the next turn, then I kill the next one. So I kill these guys in three turns. And Blood Pot's always there to be used regardless. So I think we go aggro here. We use, well, what does Berserk actually do for us? Berserk allows us to play an extra energy this turn, so that's six energy. That means I could do Pommel, Bash perfected. And then like twin strike or something like that. And then the next turn we just lethal anyways. So Berserk gives us Pommel Bash perfected on turn two. Well let's see how this turn plays out. Let's see how this turn plays out first. Um we have a lot of energy here, but not a lot of things to play with it. I, I do think fine Berserk here. And I like the Reaper here. So we can draw into the... Uh, I can play like Ghostly and Second Wind here. It doesn't really matter. Ghostly, Flame Bear, Second Wind. Or we can keep doing damage. Well, next turn we're going to have Bash Perfected kill one of these guys and then well if I set up so this guy does perfected so perfected right now is doing how much damage um I guess I can count one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen it's 39 39 plus six it's 45 okay We're looking at 48 damage perfected strike 48 so if I get this guy down to 48 which I can I kill both of them next turn I can do this is one two three attacks I could do bash perfected pommel perfected so next turn I can do bash perfected pommel perfected bash perfected pommel perfected okay so if I do all of my attacks right now, I can kill both of them next turn. But it's something to be said that like, since I am vulnerable this turn, I should probably block a little bit more. And maybe I save more life by blocking more here than killing them both next turn. So if I kill both next turn, sure, I'll sa <coughs> save all the damage next turn. But how much damage am I taking now for being vulnerable? This is going to block for 1, 2, 3, 4, so 20. This, this is blocks for 20. And we always have blood blood as well. Like I said, I have lethal next turn if I do this play. This is how much? 20. This is uh, 30. 33. Alright. And then we have lethal for both. Just like we predicted. 
full life. So, I get to cleave and like wild strike. We end up getting a pocket watch, which is kind of weird, you know, because card draw is nice, but that could that could be beneficial. Let's say I play like I play three perfected strikes and I draw a lot of cards. I, I might get play out of pocket watch. It's not the favorite rare like I was looking for. I was looking for. You know, Tori, Intimate Burner, things like that that can really preserve a lot of life. So I can just go, go all the distance, but this this could work as well. These cards I don't need. Looking for a better... Like, that was one of the events I wanted to find. Now I want to find a... Um, he said next turn, so... I don't know. This is awkward. I mean, I'm taking damage here. But whatever. What can I say? Um, should I try to use Snack Oil here? Because I don't really care about Snack Oil, and maybe I, I he drops a potion. I don't know the potion chance here. What's the potion chance here? I mean, how much do I value Snack Oil? It could be useful. Five card draw. It, it, it's actually really good for perfected strikes. It could be quite useful for like the, the giant head here. But at the same time, also five HP. I'm probably missing out on. Five HP is also not that much because I have blood vial and I have reaper. I'm at thirty percent right now. Right, thirty percent is a little low. <laughs> Son of a gun. Okay, so now we're at twenty percent potion chance here. I think with the percentage, that was totally fine. I don't want ghostly. Yeah, let's skip this. All right. So we wanted to fight a boss here for another rare relic. That's exactly what we wanted: is rare relics. Now, if we take the normalities, it plays into pocket watch, and then we can go ahead and use this gold over in this shop, these two shops. So I can remove a curse, remove a curse. Do I think the gold is more important than elite fights? Probably not, because I can just get a rare fight right now. And not have to pivot to these two shops. But again, because removing the curse is going to be like 125 and then 150. So that removes like a 280 gold of mine plus the opportunity cost to remove other cards. But I always got to think about it. So here we can draw into three cards. We can draw double tap this turn. So what we could do is actually, instead of doing Shockwave, well, let's, let's say we do Snake Oil, right? But let's say, instead of doing Shockwave, we draw into Double Tap, we do... We have Lethal. But we also wish for Nunchaku. We Power came back? Oh, nice, Elo. Yeah, I kill this right now with a Master Strategy Double Tap stuff. But, do I want to kill now or do I want to have Nunchaku stacked? That's the question. Because yes, I can kill now, but maybe set up the chakra is better. If I do shockwave perfected, double tap perfected kills, then I, I still have the chakra. So this is better because next turn I have the chakra perfectly. Got wing boots. So. Another Battle Trance is really good for this deck. I know it goes against Pocket Watch, but Battle Trance... Um, from my understanding, no, I I, I don't remove Strikes when I have Perfected Strike. I, I, I feel like I don't need to, and we kind of operate around the Strikes, which is kind of weird, of course. So here we have D Disarm, which is actually really good as a one-off to handle Time Eater, to handle Waken 1, to handle the Heart. But then we also have Battle Trance, which is card draw and a five energy deck six with berserk blade right so it's kind of tough call here do i want to take this arm just to kind of help me survive against the heart or do i want another battle trance and just keep smorking so what we do is maybe three perfected strikes a turn we bury in the bottle of the heart rinse repeat i don't know tough to call yeah, unfortunately, Pocket Watch and High Energy Decks are not, is not the best. I also got, if you notice, my other rare relic that I got, guys, is a Wing Boots. So we're getting a little bit unlucky. But what I can do is, like, do a lot more elites. I can go for, like, one, two, three, four, five, six elites. So wait, one, 
two, three, four, five. Yeah, five elites. I'll use a wing boost like that. One. Okay, one charge here. Second charge here. Ah, uh, I can only use the third charge there. I couldn't make a choice. Regardless. The question here is disarm versus battle trains. Disarm helps. As a one of. Uh, the, the, the Dorno Deca is going to have artifacts, so I can help strip artifacts to get vulnerable applied. It also actually is going to have artifacts as well. I just don't know if I'm going to be able to upgrade this though. Sure, why not? Actually, I could even do this. I could do elite here, so I can go one, two, three. So wait, wing boot, wing boot. So one charge, two charge, and then the third charge over here. So we end up getting one, two, three, four. If I go one. So one charge, two charge, one, two, three. I mean, it doesn't really matter. I mean, campfires give me um, an upgrade on disarm. So I upgrade disarm and I, I recall. So I, I upgrade disarm here, and then I recall over here. Sure. So if I go to this campfire, what I would be doing is. Let's say if I okay, this came fire, and then I do one, two, three, four. So, same amount of elites, right? But I get an extra campfire. This gives me an extra campfire if I just go here and I go one, two, three, four. So, I get an extra upgrade. An extra upgrade could be disarm, it could also be shockwave. This is important for the heart. And one charge. Two charge. Three charge. All right, same one of elites. I wonder if enlightenment's good here. Enlightenment can play shockwave and bash. Um, we can draw into Wait, well, next turn we have offering, so offering's gonna be let's take a look. I can draw one, two, three. No, I can't play battle trends here. Make sure I draw these 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and then I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Which is not go away though, I have double tap perfected strike. We have lethal turn 2. Especially if I do finesse. If I do finesse, I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Draw 5 cards, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. We have lethal turn 2. Actually, matter of fact, if I just play. If I only play a couple cards here. Um, the pocket watch also gives me lethal, but I have lethal regardless if I play offering. So I, I do this. I can do pocket watch here. And next turn I draw 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. And we can hit double tap with offering. But with offering, double perfect strike wins anyways. One, two, three, four, five. And we draw these five. Um, perfect strike, perfect strike, twin strike wins anyways. But if I, let's say I want to skip playing the offering, then we play one, two, three, four, five, six, eight. And offering draws into double tap. But we don't need a double tap for this, right? Doesn't perfect strike already kill? It's 48 damage, so when we have vulnerable, we're looking at. 72 damage 72 72 plus one twin strike that's lethal Snuggle oil, perhaps. So we have another Reaper. Which is more healing, alright? But I don't know. There's just a second shockwave. Shockwave is more vulnerable, more weakened. And let's say it's really important that we find weakened for the heart. 
It also strips the artifacts. I would say second wave, second shock is pretty good because it strips both your artifacts for Donadeka and Act Four Elite. It also ensures that we'll find the weaken, which will save our ass against the heart. So I think a second shock wave is okay. More so than a reaper. The reaper can heal a decent amount, but I think Shockwave gets out of the deck, but also does important things like Vulnerable and Weaken. How you doing, Trixie? Is that a fair assessment here? One. One. Two. Three. Do we care about events more? We already got my loop, we already got the rare relic event, right? So we don't really care about these events that much. So let's go ahead and upgrade uh, Shockwave, yeah? Is Shockwave a better upgrade? Now that we have two Shockwaves, do we care about upgrading Shockwave? Or do we rather upgrade like Battle Trance to get even more card draw? Or do we rather upgrade like Flame Barrier? So we have well, some block. This is kind of interesting here. I can also recall and keep my options open here. Bronze skills. One, two, three. I guess it's the same thing. Uh, we have trip to get weapon. Let's take a look. Trip is more vulnerable. Looks like we're gonna have a big offering turn. Not really. We want double tap. Double tap's all the way about down here. What does magnetism do? If we just like play minimum cards just to get um, pocket watch value, and we can get further into double tap and berserk, and we can win the game with double tap, right? So I'm thinking we play trip here. We just do minimal pocket watch stuff, so this... Well, at the same time, it's a lot of damage I'm missing out on, right? If I do that... I'm missing out too much damage if I do that. It's not be a snickle oil kind of fight, for sure. I go to the fight for sure here. Uh, I want to try to get a decent Reaper in this fight so I can heal back up. I'm trying to heal. Because I wasn't using Snake Oil on the other fights, I'm, I'm missing out some of my Ornithopter heal, so I'm actually getting low on life. If I just draw five, the next turn I draw eight, I draw double tap. Extra draw f eight, and then I can do battle trance. Palma goes up to here. The next Palma goes up to here, and battle trance goes up to here. Yikes! Let's do offering. I use bathroom real quick. Okay. So if we play to pocket watch. We're not playing to pocket watch here. We're not playing to pocket watch here. I want to get in Berserk here. I want to get rid of Sutter's Bane. I want to draw into double tap. I want to draw into double tap, effect to strike. On the following turn. How do I do that? It's impossible. I get Snow Snack Oil. Alright, we'll use Snack Oil. I don't think he's attacking me here. He's probably not attacking me here. I can do shockwave. Uh, strike, strike, strike. 
Let's do four strikes instead. I think we have more than lethal here, but to get a reaper, squeeze a reaper in as well. He's not attacking me here, yeah? Usually, like, does a small attack and then a debuff. Sometimes he does do attacks, though, back to back. Sometimes he does do two attacks back to back. And if I want to, like, hedge my bets, I could just play Flame Bear in the, in the event that he is doing two attacks back to back. I don't even think I need to play Hemokinesis. Although it is a significant amount of damage. Because next time we're going for lethal with snack oil. Double tap perfected strikes and reaper involved. Um, happy flower is also a thing. That's incredible. We have so much energy. So basically it comes down to it. I want to do 30 something damage. Also, again, there's a chance that he attacks us on turn 2 as well, yeah? So I think we play around that. So we gotta make a decision. Do we do we want do we do we need this 36 damage here? I mean, why not go all out? Yeah. How much damage are we gonna have next turn though? Probably a shit ton. I'm gonna do this. So he weakens me, unfortunately, on my big turn. He weakens me on my big turn. Last life. So we're playing double tap. Probably playing the small strike first. Um, how much energy do we have? Double tap plus this is already six energy. That's unfortunate. Yeah, double tap your first thing was good, that's true. You're right. That would have saved some energy. Should have played strike first as well. Ah, uh, fucked up. Can I get a heal in here? We have Luther regardless, right? Maybe we can should get the heal off. Because we're gonna have Luther regardless, I, th I would say, pretty easily in this fight. Yeah? And he's not attacking me for not that much more than 18, right? Because he's weakened. And I think we, we end up with second wind here. Second wind strike. And we waste him Chaku, of course, but... Uh, we get back to four. Got a feather. And now we have Entrench, where it's like... Um... You know, Entrench was like the Captain's Wheel, you know, things that we were talking about, but of course this is just a big skip. What? Yeah, it's pretty hot, yeah. So we want to go here. Or we can go for another shop, right? But we want to kind of save our shop for Act 3, yeah? For like a rare relic. So we'd go one here, then back here. Or we can go to the shop and then go event elite. But I think we want to save the shop because the only thing we really want is a rare relic. That seems fair. So we go boom, boom. These elites are kind of awkwardly placed with wing boots. Go this way. Have enlightenment. Enlightenment is pretty decent this turn. I could definitely play a lot of cards with enlightenment here. What else is there? The bomb. Let's try the lemon here. Why not? Let's play a lot of cards here. Potion belt. So potion belt's gonna be good. Potion belt is gonna be good if we get a nice shop and we can just buy fairy in the bottles. I wish I had more fairy in the bottles now. If I just have a whole bunch of fairy in the bottles, I, I feel pretty content. They're getting reaper offered to us again. 
Um, is Reaper just net positive or not? I don't know. It's two energy and a single target it heals for six best case. So if we have red skull, it heals for uh, ten. Heals for ten, which is like two potions, right? It's two potions worth of healing for two energy. It also does ten damage. Ten damage heals for ten. Best case scenario with red skull. Most of the time it just heals for six, does six damage in a single target fight. For the heart, for instance. But for Act 4 Elite and for Donadeka, it could heal upwards of like, you know, 20. But, I don't know. I feel like a second Reaper feels a little bloaty, doesn't feel that good. Because we're not really a strength deck. I'm leaning towards skip here, but... Take a look at the fights. So, Act 4 Elite, Reaper can heal for 20. If we're not weakened and if we're not negative strength and if they're both vulnerable and they don't have any shield max case scenario is healing for 20 yeah with red skull evolved no red skull we're healing for 12 for two energy two i don't know reaper feels bad yeah guys can we all grant sleeping reaper here double tap increases the ceiling that can be a 24 heal all right double tap with reaper is Potential 24, but again, active relief, they have shields, you know, I may not have negative strength, uh, Red Skull may not be active, Vulnerable has to be applied to both of them to really get max value, I mean, it also is using a double tap charge when it could be doing perfected strike. Am I crazy for skipping the Reaper? I don't think I am. So we can go ahead and get another upgrade. So we're, Palmer Strikes for upgrades, I mean, it does give us more draw, more, more options. You don't think upgrading one of the Shockwaves for permanent weak and vulnerable is pretty important? I think it is. I mean, I know we have double shockwave, but for instance, the way the draws might go against the heart, I may only get to play one of them, and then the second one gets blocked completely. So, if I can have the one that I play be this one, well, that'd be fantastic. I wouldn't have to worry as much. The alternative is to maybe get this upgraded so we can actually sometimes block a little bit for beat of death or whatever. That seems kind of away from what we're doing. And then, um... We could talk about Evolve. Like, when we get this in play, we actually get card draw from statuses, but that seems... Like, least of my concerns. Um, it's weird because of the artifacts that... I don't know which one I'm going to draw. What if, if I upgrade both Shockwaves, well, then both of them could be the, the Superstars, you know? But... I don't know if two upgraded Shockwaves is worth it. Whereas I could probably do, like, Second Wind. Because this could be... For Dono and Deca, at least. For Dono and Deca, this could be all the block I need. Second Wind sec with Evolve. I wonder if second one's even a good upgrade for the heart as well. If we upgrade Evolve and second wind. Now we're looking at status as being some block for the interim. It also makes my defense block for more. So second one's not a bad upgrade. Well, the Disarm's already upgraded, so... I think this also gets season play in Act 4 Elite as well. This definitely sees play in uh, Dono Deca right now. This is going to be a superstar Dono Deca. I wonder if we actually just want card draw from, from the Evolve. I don't know. Also, upgraded Shockwave. It's just, geez. Second one is kind of just barely doing anything. It, it, hit, it has some high moments in the heart. It has some moments in the actual elite. It makes it worthwhile just for the couple turns. So I definitely don't hate it. Yeah, we want to upgrade these Palmer Strikes. We really do. With Frozen now we can kind of manipulate these. And we can really utilize this card draw a little bit better. But I, I have to say that I don't think Palmer Strike is the upgrade. When I think we really want to make sure that we can just... Uh, I think actually second win is a decent upgrade here. Kind of talk myself into it. Oh, I got to shop anyways. Oh, we couldn't buy Brimstone because I got, I found the shop. Look at that. Isn't that just stupid? If I didn't see the shop here, we buy uh, we buy this at the um, Act, 4, Act 4 shop, and then we probably win the game off this alone. This is huge. The alternative is, like, if you really want to go for a, a foot race, we go Brimstone, and now we now it's really a foot race. Who's going to win? Well, this is really a big, big bummer because this is one of the uh, elites. This is one of the relics I was looking for from the elites, and... Yeah, we're just 50 gold short, which would have been perfect for Act 4, so I don't know. Maybe that's not the end of the world. 
Brimstone really puts us into like a foot race, but I, I think we don't really have that much strength dealing cards. It, it would just do unnecessary amount of damage to me. For me, this is how to kill a run. Apotheosis upgrades all our pummel strikes and our shockwaves and a flame barrier. Apotheosis, if we get it out in play, sure. If we get it out early, I definitely don't mind it at all. This wouldn't be good act for exactly. Well, this no instant sprinter would be good for act four and act four because we could actually set it up for the heart. You know, turn three or turn four, and that alone for the heart is what we care about. So we just want like a turns of tangible against the heart with trading the bottles. Those are the exact kind of things you need for the heart. Save for the potential rod or Tori, for instance. Tori can still show up. We haven't seen these yet. And we can make enough money to get Tori a rod. Um, yeah, it's possible. Other hand, I can also remove a defend here. I can remove a defend. I can remove chemokinesis. Apotheosis is like we have toolbox that can potentially give it to us, but apotheosis, we have a 30 card deck, right? And we play it for two energy, right? And it upgrades our pummel strikes. Which is one of the big upgrades. But if we find it like on turn three or turn four, is it even worth playing it at that point? You think we draw 12 cards a turn? I mean, we have offering, we have battle trains. And we have we can play around pocket watch as well to kind of draw apotheosis sooner. But I meant instead of buying the apotheosis, I can buy a relic from the shop as well. You know? I can buy a relic instead. Or potions, right? Potions are really good with, against the heart. We're probably going to want to buy some potions. In fact, are any of these potions we care about? Unfortunately, no. I just didn't want to see a shop here. Three random skills. All right, so next time we draw f um, eight cards, we have Perfected Strike, Perfected Strike, Perfected Strike. And then the following turn we have Offering. We have Lethal, but what if I don't want to draw, what if I want to play only three cards next turn and then the following turn I have eight cards here. So next turn I only play this, 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 and I have eight cards, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Play offering. Eh. It's a big waste of damage here. And here's a good here's a good case for like Pummel Strike pluses and stuff. Big waste of damage there. So if you go one, two, three. And draw eight cards. Shockwave is, isn't in play. Shockwave is not in play. Which maybe Shockwave was the important to play. I kind of skimmed past this. I think Shockwave was really important to play. Now that I think about it. So I have an idea here. Idea here. Oh, we got Lizard Tail. That's actually really good for the heart. Pork Revenge, how you doing, buddy? Yeah, Lizard Tail is pretty decent for the heart. Do we want an Iron Wave? Iron Wave can be some pluck. Dual Wield can be what? Dual Wield could be... What does Dual Wield do for us? What does Dual Wield do for us, huh? Like, it doesn't do anything. You know, we don't... 
just want to do a wheel berserk most likely. We don't want to necessarily do a wheel perfected strikes because I think our attack density is probably just fine. Um, and I actually wonder if we want to upgrade evolve. If you do a wheel strike, it increases the damage of perfect strike. Yes. If you do a wheel perfect strike, it also increases it. Yep. It's active scaling in the fight. So Shockwave Evolve are the upgrades here. Uh, I remember last time I had Evolve as an upgrade potentially, and I regretted not doing it, but I don't know if I actually need the card draw this time around. But I mean, yeah, I think Shockwave is going to be more important. It all depends though, of course. We have the Vom, we have the Violence, we have the Lightman. Alright, let's take a look. Lightman plays, um, well, we draw. Oh, if I upgraded Battle Trance, I would have drawn Shockwave, and then Enlightenment would have done Shockwave into Double Shockwave. Wow. Enlightenment doesn't do that much for me here. And that's a bad Shockwave for me to lose. And these artifacts are killer. These artifacts are killer. Oh boy, that's pretty bad. We have Double Tap's coming up, though. But we don't have Double Tap on the, the offering turn. So this is, this is really rough. We do have Berserk though in play early. Um, if I were to do Violence... Let's say I do the Bomb, right? Well, Enlightenment allows me to play... Shockwave, Flame Barrier... And some attacks for Nunchaku, I suppose. Not much, actually. Shockwave. Enlightenment doesn't do that much for me. What's up, T-Peaks? Well, yeah, I mean, unfortunately, the, the artifacts should be a problem. I wonder if... Offerings at the bottom of the deck, too. And we have second wind evolve. We want to get to evolve and second wind. Second wind evolve is going to be our block, so we evolve second wind is going to be really huge for us. Can we even get by with... Uh... Like, what if, what if this turn I actually just play, like... The bomb shockwave... What if I just play the bomb and shockwave? No, but I want to play berserk as well. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay. So what if I do? I can't get pocket watch here. Okay. What if I actually just play battle trends, berserk, shockwave? Ah. Uh, because I want to get double tap with... I want to double tap with double effective strike here. Okay, one sec. If we do pocket watch, one... I want to play Berserk this turn, though. So since we want to play Berserk this turn, we have to play Battle Trance that, and we have to play one more card. We want to play Shockwave. And then it determines whether I get Pocket Watch. We have... Take all that damage. And the next turn we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. And we can do Shockwave, Double Tap, Reaper into Perfect Strike. Not quite. So let's say we don't get pocket watch, then we next turn we draw shockwave, double tap, and this. And then the following turn we have one, two, three, four, five. And the bomb will be taken off, so the bomb is taken off. Well, I can't play the bomb. Enlightenment helps you play these, but I don't need the help. I guess it helps me play it and allows me to set up and track a little bit easier. We have five cards. Five cards is not good enough though. Maybe it is. Alright, so I'm thinking about Pocket Watch here. 
What if it's just Battle Trans Berserk Shockwave? You get Pocket Watch. No, no, no. Violence can change things because violence will pull in some some cards, right? That perhaps I don't want to play. And change the mid-rolls for the better, but that's RNG, I can't really control that. Wait. A good hit would be like uppercut just to get more, you know, vulnerable uptime from shockwave. So a good hit should be uh uppercut here. And let's say we decide we don't want to do Pocket watch. This seems fair. Just the following turn is pretty bad. The Reaper heals a little bit though. So then it comes down to bomb, which I don't have the energy for actually. Lightning and violence. And violence, I'm unsure because it changes my play entirely. Violence completely changes things. Lightning doesn't do anything though. That's just a bit scary because I guess we closer to offering gets me closer to second win and evolve, yes. But I think I have to use Reaper to block next turn. The way it's looking. stuff on my deck it just pulls through attacks and I don't know how it pulls the attacks I don't know if it pulls the next three attacks so it would violence pull reaper perfected strike strike would violence pull pommel strike reaper perfected strike does it pull the next three I mean that's something we gotta know about violence does violence pull the next three in succession and we can kind of see that because of frozen eye in which case that makes this turn become shockwave double tap perfected strike perfected strike it says random as opposed to three random attacks. So yeah. I think, can just, I think I think it makes some sense to do uh but I don't want to pull Reaper because I think Reaper's gonna be really important to to block and heal. But again Lightning doesn't do anything. So we already determined that we're not gonna be getting Bucket Watch here. I wish I had ice cream. If I have one more card draw, I guess. I have lethal here, but I opted for double reaper instead. But I did have lethal here. So I'm healing 12. Well, I'm actually healing uh, 24, which is like I'm blocking. That's if I'm blocking, right? Healing 24. Um, and the next turn I heal for eight, I block for 18, plus ghostly armor, perfected strike. So blocking for 24. Um. It's not bad. Not bad. So, and the alternative was like if I played differently, I could have done the perfect strike. I would perfect strike and kill this guy outright. 
but I'll do it like this. I think healing for 24 offsets this. End up taking 8. We get pocket watch here. We get a red skull value. We have evolve. Evolve should be nice. Let's keep the bash applied. I don't necessarily need to do disarm. I think I'm just going for lethal here, right? Pretty sure we're just going for lethal. So I think we'll just get pocket watch here. Go for lethal. Because we have a lot of lethal perfect strike. And evolve is in the deck. If I want to save life, I do disarm here, and then I, my draw is affected, and then it kind of makes me want to use offering, and I don't want to use offering. I want to save as much life as possible. So if I draw eight cards next turn, there's a good chance. There's a good chance that I have lethal. Vector Strike is doing 72. Well, it's not guaranteed, of course. Worst case scenario, I have to use Offering. Which is pretty bad. So 76, 76. Um, that both happens right there. 76, 76. Palmer Strike draws to double tap, yeah? Then we can play double tap, double tap, and win the game. We lose then Chaku Valley, but it's like we got down to a decent amount of life here, which is kind of bad because I want to save my Lizard Tail and Fairy in the bottle for the heart. I, I want to make sure I don't die in the next fight. We can't really preserve Chaku here, can we? We can try to restack it up though, in the very least. So what we can do is like. And lightning bash, that would have effective strike stuff. Right? And that could I can buy some. I can buy some Ninjaku. Okay. And 45 life and a dream here. Luckily I don't have that many powers. So transportation versus madness. Um, they're all pretty bad. This is not a very good toolbox. My number one priority here is maybe I actually just one shot the little little cultist and then just I want to want to smork this boss. I really don't want to lose my fear in the bottle. Can't skip the toolbox. So this is nature is giving um awaken one strength when he already has three strength. Transmutation could do things like uh I think transmutation is actually just the best one. But I, I do think that we should probably kill these uh these cultists. Or in the very least Reaper now. If I save Reaper Let's say I just do Perfected Strike, Reaper Disarm, right? Next turn we draw into these. I perfect Strike the next guy. And then we Ghostly, Ghostly, Defend, Defend. And then we have to draw into Shockwave and Berserk. And I don't know how long I can go in this fight, but... Yo, thanks for the gift this up, Elo. Welcome. Next time we have a lot of energy here. Draw eight cards. Uh, if I do pommel, I can draw these five. It's bad. Do I want to save Reaper for later on in the fight? I don't think I, c I can afford to. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. But then I get shockwave like that. That's pretty important. 
I actually think I I don't reaper here. It seems crazy because I get most value out of the reaper now because of their multi attack. Right? I'm sorry, the the multiple enemies. So that's twelve. But later on, I can get uh, reap of vulnerable and get like up to six. If I double tap, I can get twelve back anyways. I actually think the best thing is to palm strike to get rid of the curse. Make sure I draw into these eight. Which is important because I can get Shockwave played. And getting Shockwave played is pretty important. And how much damage am I missing by not attacking the weaker one exclusively? I do think that killing these things makes sense. So what I'm going to do is this. We're going to pocket watch. Okay, I'll walk him. I'll walk him. So here we get the Shockwave. I'm wasting perfect trick damage, but it feels necessary, no? Uh, I might end up losing, um... <sighs> I might end up losing... I might end up using attack potion here just to kind of... preserve damage on here, because I don't want to stay too long in this fight. Double tap's coming up. Oh my god. If I in the bottle, I suppose I could use, but I really don't want to. One second, I gotta take a quick little break to walk my dogs. Alright, my bad guys. So, oh yeah, we're in a predicament here. So, I feel like I have to use a tag pot because I don't want to die. And, uh, 5 HP might be relevant. So much so that I don't want to use my fairy in the bottle, but I don't know if that's, if that's avoidable. I feel like we're gonna be at the use fairy in the bottle for the first turn of the next phase, so that's unfortunate. But I'm using attack by here. Interesting. So bludgeon is kind of what I was looking for. Because that kills the cultists. And allows me to focus my damage. Over on the awakened one so I can kill it swiftly. But it would have been go double tap on the following turn. But regardless, we have to do um, Shockwave. That's very unfortunate. I did Palm Strike there, would have been perfect, I suppose. Alright, we'll waste damage. This is the multi-attack, which is fine. So I could probably get away playing Berserk here, although... Like, if I do Offering now... Double tap is not good enough. Take care! Ooh, Mexican food, that sounds delicious. Take care, pizza! This doesn't help me stay alive. And also, it's probably pretty important for the second phase as well. Channel chip and lunch for you. What are you trying to say? You're trying to think about some lunch? Um, how would that work? How would that work? What do you mean? If we do offering here, I can get shockwave. For the, for the final for the next phase. Oh, uh, this is bad though. Uh, this is really bad. Oh, TPX started it. Really? We send you donations. You order yourself lunch. Okay, what kind of lunch are we talking about here? I'm craving a burger. I won't say no to food. I mean, I did groceries recently. But you know what? Eating some burgers. So how much damage is this guy doing here? He's weakened. He has no strength. He's doing um, 16 right now. We're looking at 16 damage which we block right now. If I do Berserk, we're looking at uh, 24 damage. 
Plus, I'm vulnerable. So we're looking at uh, 36 damage. Looking at 16 here. And then it'll be the 32. All because I want to play more cards, more powers, more cards, right? Nah. Maybe I don't need to preserve in this fight, but the, I really want to preserve during the bottle. I don't think I'll be able to, unfortunately. What's up, Serotonin Dragon? This is kind of tough, guys. If I do offering now. Waste of energy too. I want to have shocker for the next phase. I, it looks like fear in the bottle is going to be for the next phase. I can't help it, you know. If I did pummel strike bludgeon here, this guy would have been a little bit lower in life, maybe like 20 HP less. I don't know if that makes a difference yet. Oh boy. I don't know how I can fear, avoid fear in the bottle. This, this is one of the worst bosses for that. But the time it would have been rough as well, I suppose. Man, the time I could have smorked. Here, I think fear in the bottle is going to use. It makes my heart fight feel very, very scary. There's a world where I just don't use offering at all here. And next turn we have double tap. Yeah, double perfected strike next turn. If we play nothing here, we have perfected strike twice. Let's say we only play this, all right? 30, 32. Remember, we would have had 21 more damage, or 20 more damage with the other route. So let's keep that comes into mind. But so 32. Nah, actually, it's just 17. Okay. Looking at 248. I have lethal. I have lethal next turn. Ah, oh, you're insane. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. But I think I do want offering for the second phase. That's the thing. But if I think I do nothing here, then I double tap, perfect strike, perfect strike, and I want to draw back into offering and stuff like that for the next for the second phase. But we have lethal next turn though, right? I'm, I'm making sure my math is not incorrect. Yeah. In case you have the meatiest of burgers, like a real thick boy. All right, after this boss, I will do this. Thank you guys. You guys are insane. After this boss. I have pocket watch, pocket watch. So I can win basically, I, want, I do want to draw to offering later though. I don't want to do my redraw like this, though. Uh, the only thing I don't like is the redraw. Don't we hate the redraw here? We can't avoid it, can we? We can't avoid it. We have Happy Flower next, the following turn. I want to draw into Offering in the following turn. Maybe Shockwave again. But Shockwave won't be in the redraw like this. If I play Flame Barrier... Flame Barrier won't be in the redraw either. Jeez. Shockwave won't be in the redraw. Flame Barrier won't be in the redraw. Sad stuff. What if I do double perfect pommel strike? So let's take a look at this. Double pommel strike. All right. So one energy, we're at four. Three, I gain back to four. And I do perfect it twice. All right, so we, we can do the redraw. All right, so we do Double tap, pommel. And now, these are in the redraw. Okay. And now, that's the best case scenario. We want to draw into like a shockwave. We want to draw into offering. We want to draw into all these things. None of these things.
I guess we're gonna have to waste fear in the bottle, which is really detrimental unless transmutation could save us. What can transmutation be? Well, we do have second wind. So if we get a finesse into second wind, so here's what we could do. If we just take transmutation, right? Finesse. Also, I heal 10. I also heal 10 here if I do this route. If I do Bash Reaper, I heal 10, right? But this guy's still doing 40. If I do Transmutation, there's a chance I get Finesse, and I can get Second Wind, Survive, and then the following turn I have Offering, Shockwave, Perfected Strikes, all those things. Panic Button, Master Strategy, etc. So the question is, do we spend two energy on Bash? Because Bash will help me get lethal in general for this whole fight. And then we get four cards. Or do we want to look for all six? Are we looking for all six or do we want to play Bash? If you really want to preserve preparing the bottle, then maybe going for six is like the best play because we can get more panic button chances, more shackles, more finesse, etc. etc. I can't play second win after that. Exactly. You're right. Unless it's a I can't. I can't play second win. So second win is actually out of the play. I lied. Second one is out of the play. We're looking at Panic Button, Dark Shackles, and stuff like that. If we do this, we're actually healing for 10. So we're end, we end up at... Uh, we only need a block for like... Ah, but the Offering would kill us anyways. Ah, this is tough. Because... So if this misses and I lose trade in the bottle, then we're going to want to bash anyways, yeah? It's pretty important, even though we do get Shockwave. Oh boy, it looks like... <sighs> I think we let Orange just take the wheel. Unless... Somehow we get Panic Button here. If we got a nice drink of dessert, you guys are insane. Okay, one second. I'll tell L to order it so, because, you know, L can do it while I do this. Do you guys think it's worth adding two more energy to get transmutation? Like, do you think it's better to have it the six or four? Because Bash is pretty important. The vulnerable is pretty important. But next turn, I will be attacking. And maybe it could save me from using Shockwave. Because I actually think we have lethal next turn. If we do Pocket Watch with Offering, we have Lethal next turn. So best case scenario, if we Bash and play it for 4, then the next turn, we have Pocket Watch with Offering, Double Tap, Double, perfect, per, double Perfected Strike, and Bludgeon. We have Lethal. So playing Bash would actually give us an out next turn if we get Panic Button. But we have two less cards to get Panic Button. Considering we will draw the double tap nuts with offering. This is exactly why we want an offering in the retail. This is perfect. Now, Reaper only heals for 10. And this guy is doing 40. What well, can I get lethal without bash? For, this, for instance, let's say I have to spend 2 energy in Shockwave. And then. Offering gives me the energy back. Double tap. Perfected. Perfected. Nah, I wouldn't have lethal. The bash. I wouldn't have lethal because that I don't have the energy for shockwave. Whereas the other way around, I have seventy-one, seventy-one. I'm looking at one hundred forty-two, two hundred, two hundred and eighty, two hundred eighty-four. 284 damage, and then the extra, extra two energy to do uh, 11 for the. No, 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 extra, extra 36 here. Uh, I think I gotta do bash. Fuck. Um, if this hits, if this hits Reaper, and I dark cycles are blind, I could save the life here. But then I don't get the double tap turn.
But I think saving fair in the bottle is important. I think Darshak was blind might do it anyways. Especially if Madness saves Reaper as well. But then next turn I won't have- I have lethal next turn already. Like I do nothing here. Um... But then I, I lose pocket watch. And I need double tap. Let's take a look. Double tap, double tap here. Boom, boom. Boom, boom. And then double tap. Alright, I have an idea. I think I could do next turn as well. Double tap, pummel strike. So I, I play pummel strike once. Double tap this one. Wait. I have to double tap both pummel strikes. Then I hit offering and double the perfect strike. How much energy do I have? One, two, three. That's gonna be Ninchaku at the fourth. So offering. So with one, two, three. I'm gonna play offering. Back up at five. So we're back up at four. And perfect strike gets me back up to three. Play perfect strike, 20 strike. How much damage is this? Alright, so 71, 71, 142 uh, plus this is 30. Fuck, one sec. Fuck me. Thirty-six. And then the pommel strikes are doing twenty-two. So twenty-two, twenty-two. So looking at forty-four, forty-four, eighty, eighty-eight, eighty-eight plus. All right, one second here. 88 plus 142 plus uh, 36. And then how much energy do we have left? We have enough for hemokinesis as well. Oh, we have enough for another perfected strike as well. No, we already did perfected strike. I think we have enough for one more hemokinesis as well. That's not lethal though. That's not lethal. Fuck. How bad is it that we don't get uh, double tap on, on the lethal turn? Can we get, so how about this? Is another line where we do lethal without going for lethal next turn. Like, let's say on the perfected strike turn, we like we second wind here, save the bottle, draw, draw, and then we have one, two, three, four, five, plus three, and then we have offering is plus five. That's three perfected strikes, that's 200 and, um, 220, no, how much is that? 213. 213. Oh, this is tough. How much damage? What does he do in turn two? What does this do in turn two? First turn is 40. The turn two is either debuff or, um. Fuck, I forget. What does this guy do in turn two? Because I, I, if I'm. I don't want to lose bottle in turn two either. So. Cause I, can, I can get lethal turn three. Nah, turn two is not 50. Turn two is not 50. <laughs> No, no, no. That's not turn two. There's no way. I wonder if deep breath is actually necessary. And I just changed my draw altogether. And that changes when offering is drawn. I wonder if, that, if that's something I want to do. Nah, turn two is not, not times three. That's, that's like turn three or something. There's no way he does 40 into a times three attack. There's no way. Or is there? <laughs> I don't think so. Let me open the door for my dog.
It's a debuff on turn two. So I wonder if I use deep breath and just roll the dice because I don't want to lose. Well, next sure it's a debuff anyways, right? So I could just be passive. Double tap, double tap. We don't quite have lethal, unfortunately. On the following turn. Maybe we do, actually. Let me see. Uh, maybe we do. Alright, let me do this again. Sorry. I do have lethal if I do double tap on pommel strike, double chemokinesis. The following turn I have offering with double perfected strike and shockwave. And then I can play twin strike as well. Um, so it depends how much damage I take here, right? So if I do this, can I sustain double chemokinesis and sustain 18 life? Okay. And now we gotta make a choice. Um, well, we do this. If it hits Reaper, that's huge. Boom! Okay. So now... I don't think I do deep breath here. I think now... Double tap Pommel. Double tap Hemokinesis. I gotta just leave 18 in the tank. But remember, he's weakened now. So... We're looking at... Uh, what, 14 damage? I gotta keep 14 life after human kinesis. And then I need to save 6 life as well for offering. So I need to save 10 life after the whatever is going on. So I need at least 25 life. And then I have offering um, perfected, perfected twin strike at Shockwave as well on the following turn. And that's a lethal. Yeah? He's healing 15. Yeah, we have lethal. So we don't do the breath here, yeah? Ah, but I can't save 14 life. That's the problem. I could pommel, pommel, second wind. And then the following turn I have... Um, one, two, three, four, five, seven, eight, and... Oh, I think I have lethal, because I, I draw into three perfected strikes. It's cutting it close, though, because I also have to play Shockwave. And Berserk is not in play. And Happy Flower is not coming. I gotta just play for the outward... I gotta play the, for the out that he's doing 18 here. With Weaken. Favorite double tap sucks. Actually. Let me see something. What if I still do lethal next turn? So wait. If I end up with second wind. Wait a second. Wait a second. Wait a second. Wait a second. Seven. I can leave. One, I can have one HP left over with offering. If, if he's doing the eighteen here, I could do double tap, pommel, pommel. Double tap, pommel, pommel. Okay, forty-four. Do it again. No, not do it again. Not do it again. 44. I want to save enough enough for uh, offering. We're very close to lethal, but the problem is I have to play Shockwave, and I don't have Happy Flower. Five energy, right? Seven energy. I only have 142 plus 36. 
That's all I have next turn. 142, 36. Ah, plus strike. I have 198 damage. That's not enough for lethal. So if I do 44 now, can I get him? Can I get him to 198? Nope. Ah. Uh, this is why I want to double tap on this turn with perfected. So if I do double tap, pommel, pommel. Pommel, pommel. I control offering now. And then I can end up with getting rid of Berserk and doing damage. And then the following turn, I have Battle Trance double affected. Alright, that's what I think the play is. Is perfected, perfected, and then second wind. If I do shockwave, perfected. Um. Because then I have 140, 152 damage on the following turn. But without it, I only have only have 102. Well, 102 plus 102. So if I do this, one, two, it's 152. 152 minus 15. Uh, if I do second wins. Next turn I only have 102, so how much in total do I have? 152, I have 254. Alright, we have lethal if I do perfect perfect the second wind. And God willing. God willing, he's not doing the big one. Doesn't matter. Kept the bottle, baby. Kept the bottle. Have a happy flower. Let's go. Okay. Now the upgrade. So now the upgrade is like battle transform more card draw. How important would have been like an extra so shockwave so that whatever shockwave I draw is going to be permanent weak and invulnerable. So I think shockwave is probably the play. Battle trends is always something that I want to play. An extra card draw could make the difference. Um, if you think evolve will get enough play out of statuses, I don't think so. I'm leaning toward a shockwave. Now four wins in a row. So which is why I'm taking my time. I'm going four wins in a row. Oh, why would I ever rest? <laughs> I don't know. Right, if we have feather. Um okay, so let's say we do shockwave, it means no matter what shockwave we draw, it will have the the weekend of the vulnerable that we really desire against the heart. Now we have lizard tail bottle, this is huge, we can buy more potions, this is huge. Um the other alternative upgrade is like uh I think Battle Trans Flame Barrier involve um 
I'm just leaning towards Shockwave here. We have Blood Vial, so we're, we're full health no matter what. Does anybody see anything other than Shockwave here? I mean, it feels like I want to maximize the weakness of the Vulnerable. Tungsten Rod we can't afford. Huh. Remember how you guys said we can buy a rod, but unfortunately we can't afford it. There's liquid memories, there's speed pots, there's potions, of course. There's also burning packs. Burning pack is more card draw, but it's only draw two. How much does Hornkleet save us here? Hornkleet gives us 14 block. Potions are... Look at memories. Elixir. They're all f healing for 5 HP, right? Each potion heals for 5 HP. Are we ever getting speed pot value? Speed pot with second wind could be useful sometimes. Speed pot second wind. And then what? Remove? And then we remove a uh, hemokinesis perhaps? So are we buying like speed pot liquid memories remove? Do we think hemokinesis is worse than, worse than a defend? I feel like when it comes to attacks, a hemokinesis is the, like the last attack I want to play. My health is so precious. And a defend at least could be value with speed pot. It also can be second wind fodder. So I feel like defend is a little bit better. Beat of death, second wind, speed pot. Hemokinesis is just an attack I don't really want to play. Hopefully he blocks for 14, yeah, but like... These potions are 5 HP each. Plus, Speedpot can be up to more than 5 HP. Speedpot can be with Second Wind. Um, you know, Sky High. Right, so Speedpot is already better than Hornkleet. And then Liquid Memories could also be, um... Very huge with Double Tap for Lethal or getting the... Disarm when I need it. I mean, you know, these are just too good. So the question is, do we just remove the, uh, the, the hemokinesis, yeah? Unless you guys have something better in mind. I mean, okay, our defense are really bad. Let's be honest, our defense are really, really bad. But we talked about speed pot second wins as fodder. We also talked about, you know, speed pot just in general for like beat of death if I need to. Is Bash needed now? Bash is expensive. But what Bash does is it gets rid of an artifact, which is pretty crucial. Get rid of an artifact so I can apply the disarm. Get rid of the artifact so I can get a better shockwave. Yes, it's expensive to play Bash. But I feel like the fact that it strips an artifact and maybe gives me vulnerable lethal in some cases, it, it, it edges out here. Now I think Speed Pot is going to be a, quite useful for second wind. And that's going to save me a whole turn against the heart. I'm going to try to really use Speed Pot with second wind here. So I think it's more than just a heal, I think it's a full block. Uh, but it just totally depends on what, what I get, if I get seals alongside it, if I have statuses, etc. I'm trying to see where, where, where I want Hemokinesis instead. Alrighty. Any button is useful. Let's see what we're drawing it to. I could use panic button and then like I can bring it back with lick memories. That's uh, that's something I could do. And then on the following turn I have 18 block. If I want to waste liquid memories, I could use it on a panic button, it's not bad. Um, the like members just for this fight, I suppose. I have disarm, but unfortunately, disarm is too many artifacts. On turn two, 
I have offering with double tap. Jeez. Maybe look at my original double tap just wins the game. Kills that guy outright. And if uh, let's take a look here actually. If I draw all these and block. So one, two, three, yeah. And the following turn I draw one, two, three, two burns, plus another three cards, and then offering draws into all these cards. That's kind of great. And I could bring back Penny Button if necessary, or I just get lethal. On the following turn for sure though, we are going to just, uh, well I don't know if he's doing the big attack, so this guy could be doing 21 and 12, so I can be looking at uh, 33 damage here. I think I was going to do Battle Trance, Flame Bear Defend, pass, and then, well, because I really want, I really want to take advantage of Pocket Watch here. If I, if I, if I, if I play Bash and stuff like that, then I can, I don't get the, I don't get the Pocket Watch, I get two burns and I can trade these two cards. I draw to five. One, two, three, four, five. I think I'm doing, uh... I think we're just passing here. And get the pocket watch here. I hope it's not to 21. Very nice. So now I can, I can go lethal here. Which is great. Which is great. I can get lethal here. Give me a second. Okay. So, in order to get lethal, Probably use liquid memories here, but I was also thinking about using liquid memories for panic button as well because this guy's doing a big attack as well. So I got to determine this exactly how I'm gonna play this. Mm, exactly how am I gonna play this? Stop turn. Give me a sec. If I can preserve all this life, I have 82 life, and then I have fear in the bottle and token is the heart, I feel pretty confident. Right now we're looking at a lot of damage. I'm talking a lot of damage right now. Looking at uh, probably 80 plus damage, right? If I'm, if I'm, if I'm thinking correctly here. Oh, Father's Stone, we're looking at 44 here. This guy's doing what, 40? This guy's doing a 57, 58? And we might be looking at 100 damage right now. So trying to kill is really important. The remembers on this does definitely give me lethal. And then I'm only facing this guy, which is maybe the price I have to pay. So let's do the energy here. Uh, I want to draw exactly four cards. One, two, three, four, right? One, two. All right, and that leaves me at six. I play this, I can draw three. Alrighty, if I play Pommel Strike, then Defend, then Double Tap, now I have only have to draw three, right? And those are exactly the three I want to draw, so that's one, two, three, we're down to five, play this, and we're down to six rather, play that, okay, let me double tap, let me double tap. If I play Pommel Strike first, also let me double tr how much damage I need to do because this guy's going to be doing, okay, Pommel Strike first, and now double tap offering draws the three I need. a little bit afterwards
Okay. Probably taking a small hit here. It's a small price I pay. I think we play Ghostly Defend Evolve. And we count our blessings. Hmm. I don't want to take any more damage in this fight, though. Is there anything better I could do? Ideally, Shockwave would be nice. So what if it's just Ghostly Shockwave? And the following turn, I have Shockwave Berserk perfected. And then I have Lethal. And Happy Flower is now procced. So I can block an extra 5, right? Or I can do Shockwave take more damage, but get lethal shooter. Is that necessary? Because we know that he's not attacking on the following turn, yeah? Well, it's, it's not guaranteed, but after this big attack, it's probably not attacking the following turn. So I'm just taking extra damage by playing Shockwave. Do I have lethal regardless, actually? Well, he has 99 block. He has 99 block. Oh, one second, one second. Um, I guess I gotta determine if, if I block here, is, is it better? We try to get because we could try to get an Nunchaku stacked. Ah, uh, because it could have a second win there. Another disarm. I feel like another disarm is worth it here. Uh, maybe a second one was better, because I didn't realize he was attacking that much. I would have saved 11 life. I could have played that better. Whoopsies. Another charm seems okay, maybe. Although, will I ever get to play it? I don't know if I'll ever get to play it, actually. Increases the chance that I find disarm for the first attack, which is probably most important because I'm vulnerable. But other than that, I don't know if I'll play the other disarm afterwards, right? Because of the artifacts. At that point, we're going for lethal. Well, maybe the fact that like this charm, second disarm, will allow me to get it within the first turn is um, probably a reason enough to take it, just so I don't die in turn two and turn three. I want to try to preserve fairy and lizard tail as much as possible. But it also takes away from me finding shockwave. Or anything else that I might want to draw into. Mainly shockwave early. It feels like the charm will be a curse. Yeah. It's also another fodder for second win. So even if like I can't play it later down the line. Alright. I can still second wind it. So it's not the end of the world. What would I want to bottle here? What am I trying to bottle here? I don't even know if I want a bottle attack. Maybe I want a bubble pummel strike. Or bash. But even bash is like, I don't know. Panacea is huge. Whoa. So we can do Panacea to stop the heart. We can also do it for the uh, Dexterity. I think that we're not going to get that much value out of Dexterity. I think stopping the Vulnerable is more important. We have Shockwave turn 1. That's huge. We have Evolve as well. Oh, if I did Pommel Strike, I could have maybe drawn into Evolve early. Which would have been nice. We have Second Wind though, as well. With Offering and stuff like that. And Disarm coming up. So we have some decent draws. 
Oh my gosh, they're very sleepy. Yeah, they love the bed. If I do Master of Strategy, I can draw into Evolve in Second Wind, which is not that good. Dependency is huge here. I wonder if instead of blocking, I just do um, shock, Shockwave, Perfected Strike, Panacea. I don't even block. And we, we, we recognize that we're not going to get that much out of the Speed Pie, right? It's much better to stop the Vulnerable, yeah? Because what is 5 Dexterity doing for us? Absolutely nothing. Maybe, maybe, maybe the, maybe there was some red school value to, to save fire pot, maybe. So here we have this arm, which is huge. We also have berserk, which I want to play, but I don't, it's kind of risky. And then we also have second wind for everything else, like the wound and everything else. So this is a pretty good turn. I could do second speed pot here to get most of the second winds. I just feel like I'd rather be not frail. And if I play Offering this turn, it might just be like Evolve, Pommel, Pommel. And to Disarm, Second Wind, yeah? Are we just forgoing Berserk altogether? Are we forgoing Berserk altogether? Or do you think Berserk, that 6 energy is going to be crucial to getting damage caps? Keep in mind, we have Fairy the Bottle, we also have Lizard Tail. I don't want to use Speed Pot now because it's, I don't get as much out of it, but at the same time, this is like one of the only times I'm going to use second win in this fight. It's one of the only times I guess. And also, if I do offering this turn, I can get um, Shockwave applied again for permanent weak and invulnerable, as well as get rid of the second disarm from the deck with second wind. Now, if he's multi-attacking here, the second win is sorely misused. But if he's not multi-attacking... Well then, second win's perfect. question is if, if he's multi-attacking this is why it's important to know if he's multi-attacking because if he's multi-attacking then berserk is playable and by playing berserk that makes the rest of the fight much easier right but if he's big attacking then berserk it just makes my life harder for no reason so what are we feeling guys it's 50 percent chance multi-attack and we can get berserk in play do we think berserk is worthwhile regardless for the void turn, for the double for the double tap turn. I think five energy and shock is fine. They say we decide to do offering regardless, right? Because we want to get the second shock wave out, no? Maybe get rid of the second disarm. Uh let me decide here. I do pommel pommel disarm. I want to be able to get rid of the second disarm with second wind. Yeah, I would use speed pie if I want to play berserk, right? I just don't. I wish I knew if he was multi attacking or not. Alright, give me a sec. But then I also get rid of Perfected Strike as well. One second. Oh god. Actually, this is perfect. This is perfect.
If I do strike first, strike offering. Six. If I was planning to use Berserk Pants, it would have been used to, to, to block the speed pot. I, I think that, um... We can probably get by without Berserk here. But we have so many lives as it is. We have Lizard Tail, we have Fair in the Bottle, so I can probably just play Berserk as well. But regardless... So I'm playing this. I'm drawing these five. One, two, three, four, five. Then I'm playing Pommel. Shockwave, Pommel, Second Wind, Perfected Strike. How much energy do we have? We gain 5. Gain 5. So then I gain Pommel, Pommel. So we're at 5, 4, 4. Uh, I can't play Perfected Strike. I can't play Perfected Strike as well as. Uh, Shockwave. I can get rid of the shockwave as well. I know I'm drawing six, but the problem is let's say I play Berserk and then I do offering. One, two, three, four, five. Alright. So pommel, I'm at two energy. Play Berserk, then I do offering, I'm at four energy. Then I can play Shockwave, Perfected, gain one energy back, second wind. But I want to play Disarm. So I can't do second wind and Disarm and all that stuff. I think we actually don't want to draw a Perfected Strike right now. Which means I don't think we want to play Offering right now. Maybe we just don't care about drawing second, second Shockwave again. The whole point is that I'm trying to get this Disarm to be second winded right now. That's the whole point of what I'm doing. So I want to kind of disarm this. I want to get rid of this because it's going to be useless later on. I want to get the block now, but it seems complicated because I also want to play Perfected Strike Shockwave. But maybe I don't need to do Shockwave number two. Like maybe Shockwave number two is not necessary. If you think about it, I already have three turns of Vulnerable. I think that should be enough to, to win the game, yeah? So then if we're playing Disarm and we're going to be doing... This might be a decent turn to do Speed Pot, actually. Yeah, but the chakra doesn't matter because I have to play Pommel anyways to hit this Disarm. So then, uh, with the map, this is 4 energy plus Pommel is 5, and I get 1 energy back, so that's 4 energy played. But then I have to play, play Disarm as well. Yeah, I know I knew chakra. I already counted it. Okay. Uh, speed fight now, and just go all in on this fight? I think so. And now we gotta determine, guys, are we playing Berserk? He doesn't clear the debuffs, no. That's why I want to play the second Shockwave to kind of get rid of the, uh... If we decide to do Speed Pot this turn while we're frail, I think we do play Berserk. But what if this multi strike? If it's multi strike, then then we're just super sad. We just wasted like all that block, and calipers are screaming at us. Fifty percent chance we gotta take. And then this is our next draw the following turn. We just threw perfected battle trans ghostly, I suppose. And then the following turn we have one, two, three, four double taps shenanigans. All right. So we're playing Berserk. And we decided we're not going to do the second shockwave, right? That this is four vulnerable is enough?
Yes. And we also decided we're gonna speed park here, and if it's multi attack, we're just really sad. But that's the that's the, that's the chance you take. We decided that the next shockwave is so. I think it's a race, and I think I have to do 54 damage as opposed to doing shockwave here. Yeah. How badly is that gonna affect me? We also have Flitcher Tail during the battle. So we're gonna be able to attack next turn. And then the following turn we have double tap as well for that turn of vulnerable. And then I mean our damage is sky high here. Chaco doesn't matter because I want to play second wind here, guys. Chaco doesn't matter. Unfortunately. On the second attack of the next rotation, he's not going to be weak and he's not going to be vulnerable for the second attack. Can I kill him by that time? Also, Captain's Wheel, so if this is multi-attack... Well... Mm, this, I'm not really utilizing Captain's Wheel, but I, I can use Captain's Wheel to attack, I suppose. So, I was thinking speed by second wind here. And... Because if this is like the big attack, I know I'm frail and doesn't utilize this perfectly, but it's like probably one of the best second wins I'm ever going to get. Nah, next turn I have one, two, three cards. And then I draw into these one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And I draw the whole thing. Dang. Although next turn I have... Uh, well, I draw statuses, so I draw one status, two status, so I draw one, two, three, four, five, and this is fine. And I was thinking that I wanted to uh, perfect a strike next turn, so I don't want to play pommel here. Is that a mistake? Next turn, I could use strikes, I suppose. And then on the following turn, I draw into these anyways. And then I can, you know. I have red skull here. This is perfect. He's doing no damage here. So I could do one. If I do three, I draw into one, two, three, four, five. Five. Six, seven, eight. Maybe, it's, maybe I just do three attacks here. Just do three attacks. I was gonna do battle trends and play. Maybe, I, maybe I do battle trends actually. Battle trends and do one, two, three, four attacks. Three attacks. Sorry. And then I draw into these five anyways. Double tap. Bomb. Bomb. Beam. Bomb. One, two, three, four. Yeah, I think we just do, I, I, like, these strikes are actually pretty relevant. I think we do all the strikes we can. Well, keep in mind, actually, with the bronze skills, he's already doing 45. I could draw 8, yeah, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. It accelerates the turn. And gets the shit out of my deck. But I have a lot of extra energy I could use now. And there's a damage cap next turn because damage cap is going to be hit pretty easily because he's the bronze skills. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I know I could pocket watch here. I know that. The point is, there's a damage cap next turn because of the bronze skills. So this is already hitting damage cap as it is. So I want to do damage now. Because I already hit damage cap. Does that make sense? Still don't want to see slime later on, right? Oh, slime could be second win value, so this is fine. And now we're no longer weakened. Oh, 
How much damage is this? I could do this. It's already damage cap. And now it's just a race where he's gonna run out of vulnerable and weaken, but I have Vizzer Tail and I have Fear in the Bottle. Did I make a mistake? We're gonna find out. Next turn we have Perfected Strikes. And a dream. Ugh. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Oh, that's perfect. Look at this turn next turn. Look at this turn next turn. Look at this turn. Look at this turn. Look at this turn. Perfected, perfected. Second wind. Fucking huge. Fucking huge. Excuse my language. If this multi-tank flame bear does a lot of damage, right? So on the the options of this multi-attack, this does a lot of damage. But we already have with fairing the bottle and this tail. We just we already win, don't we? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. We draw eight next turn. No more vulnerable though. But still, we have two lives. This is perfect use of the bottle. Perfect use of bottle or tail. I can do it, baby. I bought a fairy in the bottle, and that fairy in the bottle, I kept it for the whole run. And it was just exactly what I needed. I didn't even need the lizard tail. Fairy in the bottle, I kept it for the whole run with my perfect strike deck, and it brought it all the way home. And second win was very relevant. Second win is the card you take to be like future proofing for the heart and stuff like that. You take it just for the heart, maybe for like act three bosses or something. And in other fights, second wind, like still get some value but for the most part you take it for the heart it all worked out and evolve was relevant as well so we took these cards that were for the heart irrelevant like for the heart only pretty much evolve which also for act four elite which we already just talked about it was all deliberate i suppose take these curses but they worked out